So on a position versus time graph, we're going to represent what would be what we would consider complex motion, which means um, we're doing multiple things within a certain time interval, right? We might be moving forward, might be moving backward, might be standing still. That's how we can represent more than one type of motion um, in the same basically time interval, okay? So complex motion would be we're not just moving forward, not just moving backward. These notes are on your handout. Okay, so... What am I doing? Where? 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 It's considered a motion diagram because you're looking at an object's position um, versus the time it took them to do that or what time it's at when they're doing that. I'm not talking about like time o'clock, right? But we're talking about at four seconds into his motion, he's 30 meters from where he started or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's the kind of stuff we're looking at here. So an example of a position versus time graph might look something like that. Okay. On this position versus time graph, it would be labeled on the side either like with a D for displacement, right, and it would tell you it's measured in meters, or it might be a P for position and it's tell you it's measured in meters. Whatever it is, uh, it might be giving you, uh, it's got to give you an indication on there what it's measuring and what the units are for that, okay? So you need to pay really careful attention to what the Y axis is measured in. The X axis will always be measuring time, okay, and that will be in seconds. Okay. Like I said, we're going to look at two different types of graphs. Not two today, but two eventually. And so there's a really distinct difference between the two types. They might look the same, but they measure two totally different things. So position versus time means after, let's look at this graph specifically, after a half a second it's traveled one meter. After a whole second it's traveled two meters. Another half a second it's traveled three meters. Do we see what's happening there? Right, that's, that's very simple motion. So in this case, we're moving at a constant speed. Right? Every half a second, we're moving one forward one meter. Would you agree with that? Okay. Um, that is also known as, distance over time is also known as, yeah, speed or velocity, right? So with that being said, um, the slope of a line on a position versus time graph tells us our velocity. That's really important. So highlight that circle. That, that part is on your handout. No. Yeah? No? Okay. Um, so highlight that circle. That Do something with that on your handout because that's really, really, really important. Okay? Yep. That needs to be um, something that we know. So the slope of a position versus time graph tells us velocity. Okay? And that's something that we have to be able to calculate. How comfortable are you calculating the slope of a graph? Calculating slope is just rise over run. Okay, so let's go ahead and practice calculating slope here. We talked through it a little bit, but let's calculate slope. To do that, you pick any two points, right, along the line. So I'm just going to pick two points, here and here. Okay, whenever we do rise over run, it's change in y over change in x. Is that the um, form you usually see it in? Or do you see y2 minus y1? or That one more, but it's the same difference. Okay. So what the, y, what the delta means, right, is final minus initial. So this is how you'll see me write it a little bit more often, right? But when we look at our, our line, we're going to calculate the slope by taking the furthest to the right minus the furthest to the left, right? The final is the one that's furthest to the right. The initial one's furthest to the left. So... To calculate the slope of our line here, or to calculate our velocity, right, really, we're going to take final y, y2, minus y1, over x2, minus x1. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate that based on the, the numbers I circled here. Okay, or the points I circled, right, or you can pick any two, but... Okay, my final y coordinate is what? Three. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I I took four minus I was a step. What about five? I swear. I swear. <laughs> what do you mean? I was assuming this one. Okay, so to calculate my slope, I'm gonna say four minus one over two minus point. Five. Do we see where those numbers came from? Yes. Okay. If you do not, you need to tell me now. 
so that we can figure it out. And if you don't, that's okay, but we need to make sure everyone knows how to calculate slope. Okay? So that gives me... Wait, where'd you get 2 minus... 2 minus 0.5 are our x coordinates, so our final point has an x coordinate of 2, our initial point has an x coordinate of 0.5. Does that make sense? Okay. So that means I'm at 3 over 1.5, so my final slope is what, 2? And if we assume this is measured in meters, and our time is measured in seconds, our units for velocity are meters per second, which is what we need it to be. Okay? You would go with whatever the graph's based on, um, but here we're going to say our y-axis is meters and our x-axis is seconds. Okay, are we good with that? So slope of a position versus time graph tells us velocity. Really, really, really important. Okay, I'm going to ask you that over and over again. You're going to have to answer that over and over again. That's important. Okay, so let's talk through what's happening in our problem here. Right? I don't really care about this part. You don't, need, you don't need this part so much, okay? But what I want you to look at here is what is happening in our motion. I want to talk through the motion here itself, okay? So from zero to, what is that? Three seconds, two seconds, zero to two seconds, what's happening? What's this person doing? From zero to two seconds, is their position changing? No, they're standing still and they're standing at their starting point, right? Zero on the side, it says it's measured in meters. So this is their starting point right here, right? That's the origin. Are we on the same page there? So from zero to two seconds, they are standing still, okay? From two seconds to five seconds, what are they doing? They're moving backwards, right? Or they're moving south or whatever, whatever way you want them to go. But their position is moving backwards because they're going in the negative direction. Okay? And they're moving backwards at a constant speed, right? Because it's a straight line. So we could calculate the velocity of this, par this portion of our graph. Okay? Is that making sense so far? Okay, from here to here, what are they doing? Right? And so what's happening here when we cross the x-axis? Perfect. All that means is that they've, got, they've crossed their starting point again. So if this is where um, this person started from, right, here's the positive direction, negative direction. Uh, I started here, I moved negative, right, uh, so it's negative 3 meters. And then I moved past my starting point to 2 meters, okay? That's all that's happening in there. That zero line, it just means that's where our starting point is. What did I do from 7 seconds, which is right here, to 12 seconds? I just stood still, right? I stood still right over here. Okay? From here to here, what's happening? I'm going backwards, and yeah, specifically, what am I doing? I'm moving yeah. faster. And how do we know? How can you tell I'm moving faster than I have before? My it took, it was more of an angle. That's right. Yeah, this is a slope that's much steeper. So a steep slope means I'm moving quickly. A shallow slope means I'm not moving very quickly, right? In this particular case, I covered one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight meters in only two seconds, right? So I moved a lot quicker than I did in past ones. But it negative. negative, right, because I'm moving backwards. So my slope in that case is negative, which means my velocity is negative, which makes sense because I'm going backward, okay? So the slope and the sign of your slope match your velocity. Oh, um, Levi, you get um, so if you have a negative slope, that means you're moving in the backward direction, right? That's what it means. From here to here, what are we looking at? 14 to 16? Are we moving forward or backward? Forward. We're moving forward because our slope is positive, right? We're moving back toward our starting point. Okay, from 16 to 18, what are we doing? Standing still. Standing still. From 18 to 19, we are... We made it back to our starting point, and then we stood still for one second. Okay? Does that part make sense, talking out that motion? Okay? You're going to have to calculate things from this graph, but you're also going to have to be able to describe the motion that you see here. Okay? 
All right, so on this position versus time graph, before we do anything, let's talk out the intervals that go with it, okay? So from zero to one second, what are we doing? We're standing still. We're standing still, okay? From one to three seconds, what are we doing? We're moving forward, okay? We're moving in the positive direction, and we are moving with constant velocity, right? Constant velocity, positive direction. Okay, what are we doing from here to here? We're still good. And then what are we doing from here to here? Yeah, we're moving backward. Yeah, McKenna. Anytime it's a straight line, that means constant velocity. Okay, so that means we're covering the same amount of distance every second. Okay. So here at, we're moving backwards, so we have constant negative velocity this time. Right? We've got constant velocity in the negative direction. So since our slope is negative, that means that we are moving in the backward direction. Does that part make sense? Okay, I know this is kind of a whole new thing for us, so I want to make sure you ask questions if you have them. Okay, what if I ask you on this, what is my velocity from 1 to 3 seconds? 20 meters a second. Okay. Yes, that's right, but I want to give you time to calculate it. So I want everyone else to calculate it, see if you get 20. It's okay. So again, when I ask you to find the velocity from 4.5 to 5, you have to, 4.5 to 6, I'm sorry. You have to know, that means I have to calculate slope, okay? Right, does it make sense that our velocity comes out negative? Yes. Right, our slope is negative. So negative 40 divided by 1.5. I'm not doing that in my head, so someone tell me what it is. 26. Okay. Negative. You do have to put the negative. Meters per second. Yep. So that negative, remember, tells us direction. It's not the value of the number. It tells us direction. So here we know we're moving backwards. That should tell us we have a negative velocity. Okay, any questions there? All right, on the last one, I want you to calculate these. I'm gonna I want you to answer these questions. What's my velocity during A and what's my displacement during B? Equals what? Point seven five meters per second? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. And what about our displacement? We didn't really talk about how we find displacement, but what is our displacement? At any point during interval B, what's my displacement? Zero. Um, not quite zero. It's 30 meters. Because from my starting point, right, at 60 seconds or 40 seconds or 80 seconds, whatever it is, from my starting point at interval B, I am 30 meters from my starting point. You're right in thinking that during B we're not moving. You are correct in thinking that. But I'm still 30 meters from my starting point. And that's what displacement is. Okay, so displacement on a position versus time graph means you just read what the y-axis is telling you. Okay, it's pretty simple. So what would you say if there was an increase in value, like A? If I asked for displacement at 20 seconds, okay. you'd find where it intersects and you try to find where it intersects. <coughs> but I'll usually make it really clear if that's the question I'm so asking. So it won't be like, what's the di displacement with A when it's like an intense? No, 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 no. Okay. No. Displ so it's just 30 minutes. Yep. Displacement, just, just read the graph. 
Okay, you're just reading on that y-axis.